really a pleasure to be here. My name is Hamid Shabazi. I'm the chairman and CEO uh, and founder of Well Health Technologies. And um, really, really pleased to tell you the Well story today. So, um, Well is a company that, that really believes in the medical services asset class. Uh, how many people here have heard of Constellation Software or Descartes or some of these iconic software companies in Canada? Okay, so a lot of these companies, um, if you take software market cap in Canada, uh, the, the market capitalization of software companies in Canada, and you take out Shopify, um, you're left with about 80% of the market cap uh, has been generated through very disciplined M&A, so open text, Constellation Software, um, Eng House, um, uh, and, 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 and there's, a, there's a very clear model of capital allocation that really works in create, creating value to the extent that you don't get you know, too aggressive on debt and, 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 uh, and, and, and are really investing in assets and asset classes that make a lot of sense. And, and so we're taking that model and we're applying it to uh, medical services. That's, 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 that's sort of, to a great extent, the big idea. And I, and I mentioned that at the outset because a lot of people ask me, you know, um, you know what, is, what, is, what is the investment focus of the business? What is the operating focus of the business? Um, we're very interested in, um, in, in, in Canadian healthcare because we believe that consolidating assets actually contribute to some of the ills and challenges of the industry. Let me explain. So of the 40 countries that have modern medical systems in the world, uh, Canada ranks in the last quartile in modernization and digitization. And this is sort of counterintuitive because we have so much, um, so much broadband here, so we're so connected, and and uh, we're really known for being a very, a very uh, advanced country. But when it comes to actually uh, digitization and healthcare, and how many people have been a, been, been to a medical clinic here in Canada in the last, you know, several months or weeks? Okay, a bunch of you. Would you describe your experience as being highly digitized? Raise your hand if you did. Okay, not many people, all right. So, um, we have about a penetration of less than 1% in, in, for example, telemedicine in Canada. Uh, whereas in the United States, uh, it, you're, they're well into the double digits. Um, a, a kind of technology forward HMO, multi-billion dollar large service uh, care provider in the United States called Kaiser Permanente, delivered over 50% of its patient visits, millions and millions of patient visits, three years ago through telemedicine. That just gives you a sense of the difference between the US and Canada right now. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a kind of a startling fact because we're, so, we're not very different in terms of our, of our approach to technology and our technology adoption. So, well as taking this approach of, of investing in assets that, that help drive interoperability and drive digitization. And today, we've, we've, we've um, really invested in, in, in medical clinics. So we own 19 medical clinics. Uh, we're the largest uh, owner of medical clinics here in British Columbia and the fifth largest in the country. We have about 600,000 patient visits. Uh, and we've become the third largest EMR provider in the country through three acquisitions that we've made in the space. And um, with that platform, we have thousands of doctors, well over 5,000 doctors that sit on our platform and pay us a SaaS fee. Uh, so clinics and doctors paying us a, a software as a service fee to support their EMR. And so um, we've also done some fundraising lately. So we're sitting on about $20 million of cash and are looking to allocate more capital. And so. Um, uh, one of the reasons why um, I think the company's got some wind behind its sales is we have um, a reference investor that a lot of people know, um, Sir Lee Ka Shing, uh, who I guess, according to um, Wikipedia, was number 23 uh, richest uh, or you know, wealthiest person in the world uh, at some point. And I think um, he, um, he's just known as kind of the Bill Gates of, of Asia and highly philanthropic and, and, uh, and, and, and a very astute investor. A lot of people, what a lot of people don't know about him is he's also quite involved in the life sciences. He owns the largest chain of pharmacy uh, um, uh, locations in Asia called the Watsons. So he owns personally uh, over 10% of the company um, and combined with his uh, venture arm is close to 20% of owning the company. And he's participated in the last four rounds 
of, uh, of our funding. Uh, I'm personally the largest shareholder today. I've spent personally about $5 million to, 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 uh, uh, to buy my stake. And uh, I, I'm taking my compensation in stock. I, I really believe in where we're going as a business. Um, it's just academic, right? I mean, you have this incredible country with a lot of positives about its uh, medical system, affordability, accessibility, but this digitization is lagged behind and it's not gonna lag behind, behind forever and it, and it needs companies um, that are disciplined and focused on bringing together some of those assets. And we think it's a perfect time to be investing in this asset class. Um, so I've already kind of referenced some of this lack of digitization a little bit. Um, you know, the, the, the lack of digitization is contrasted by the extreme want and need for it. <laughs> um, you know, there isn't one survey out there that says that people don't want this. Um, it's very frustrating that for over 90% of medical clinics today, you have to call them on the phone, get someone on the phone to get a, an appointment, as opposed to being able to message them, send them an email, send them a text, go online and book something online. This isn't whiz bang technology, folks. This is pretty, pretty rudimentary technology, but it has not, there, there, there's, no, um, there's no kind of uh, research and development risk associated with this. It just has not been implemented because we're talking about 4,000 clinics in the country and the largest chain is 35. There are actually only two chains larger than 30, two chains between the size of 20 and 30, and every other chain is below 20. It's startling, if you really think about it. It's quite, it's quite mind blowing. And so technology does not live well in a, in a non-scaled environment. You need scale to be successful in technology. Why? Because technology is expensive, right? Um, so uh, I'm wasting, oh, I don't, not much time left. So uh, I'm gonna go through a couple of key slides that I think um, are, are, are absolutely critical in terms of tracking the story. We've characterized the story as having a digital portfolio and a clinical portfolio. And so, and so Keep, keep tabs on us by, by looking, about, looking at how we acquire and grow these portfolios. We're, bu we're buying these clinics at somewhere in the four to five times, four to 5.3, 5.5 times EBITDA range. And on the digital portfolio side, roughly three to four times annual recurring revenue and single digit EBITDA if they're run properly. And we're getting, op getting cost optimizations uh, and, 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 and the form that we're, in the, in the way that we're managing them through shared services. We've established shared services at our HQ. Um, and when we buy an asset, we make it more profitable by virtue of cost optimization. Um, you know, we already talked a little bit about this, but one of the things that we do is, again, being the third largest EMR provider in, in the country, EMR basically means electronic medical records, and we're transforming that wall of folders to, uh, to basically a digital experience. These are the three software acquisitions we've made. Um, once we have EMR, what's really exciting about being an EMR service provider is you get to plug other things into it. So we'll be we'll have the greatest opportunity to advance telemedicine, to advance pa digital patient engagement by virtue of having an EMR asset. Because all those records, all those subjects, doctors, patients, et cetera, charts, they're all held in the EMR. So whoever has the EMR has the best chance at advancing and leading out those things. Um, we will talk a little bit about the strategy. Our acquisitions, again, digital and clinical in nature. We have five analysts that cover the story today. Um, and uh, th I think the, the consensus target is about $2, and they're all forecasting profitability for us next year, which we're pretty comfortable with. And um, we, uh, if, 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 if you're sort of tracking uh, our revenue, you know, again, based on all the acquisitions that we've made, we've pretty much already met our consensus and, 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 and kind, of, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of blown through that. So I think that's why you're seeing the analysts increase the, the rates. And, uh, and, and, and a lot of people think about us within the context of our market cap, but remember, we're sitting on $20 million of cash and we're very disciplined capital allocators. So once we've allocated the capital, what will our revenue be? Right? Um, this is Lee Cushing and uh, his investment history into the company. Again, him and his venture arm have been investing at every round. I'm personally not taking a salary. I'm taking stock as my salary because I've seen this movie before. When you, when you bring together quality assets, quality people, and you cost optimize, 
and, uh, and you don't get drunk on debt and you, and you just run the business in a very practical and diligent way, value goes up. Um, there's some reference transactions that show that um, ultimately these, these assets go for a lot more than what we're buying them for. So that's why we're so choosy. It's collection of logos and people. Again, this is our strong team. Um, you'll see a bunch of TO logos there. So a bunch of us worked together before. Um, Arjun Kumar ran uh, the, lar the largest Oscar service provider in the country. Oscar is 20% uh, of the Canadian uh, EMR marketplace is Oscar. It's an open source EMR. All three of our acquisitions have been Oscar service providers. So he ran the third largest EMR in uh, Ontario. Of course, Pardeep Sang is here. He's the vice president of uh, strategy and investor relations. He was a star analyst uh, that, that um, uh, you know, ha has, has joined the business uh, and left the profession of being an analyst for now, which we're really excited about. And Dr. Michael Frankel's chief medical officer was the largest owner operator of medical clinics in BC. So he's now joined us and is our full-time uh, medical uh, um, overseer. Again, the stock, I think, as you can see, has been fairly, uh, you know, performant. Um, and I think it's been mostly reflective of two things, our acquisition uh, path and as well maybe some, uh, uh, you know, some, some exposure on Mr. Lee's involvement in the company. And uh, that's about it. You know, I think I'll just leave you with the fact that we're a purpose-driven company. Uh, we believe that with our efforts to defragment uh, healthcare, all, either digitally or clinically, we expect to drive better communication and, 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 and better experience for both doctors and patients. You know, when you live in a world, I mean, pretty much every single thought leader that you talk to globally about, about medicine will tell you there's, 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 there's a much faster growth in patients than there are doctors. And so the analog world's not going to cut it. The only equalizer is technology. The only way that we're going to be able to meet the need of people in the future is by enhancing and delivering better digital tools to amplify doctors. That's really what we're doing as, as a high-level growth objective. Thank you very much.